first you have to record your first- <laughs> Hey guys, it's Maria. So this video is going to be a little more relatable to my fellow musicians out there who are struggling to record their juries or recital submissions for the end of the school year. So guys, the deadline is quickly approaching. You don't have any recording equipment. What are you going to do? From personal experience, recordings are a pain in the butt. Here's what I do when I have to record a piece and I'm running out of time because I spent the whole semester playing chamber music and other pieces that I cannot play on my recital. This process is divided into three main stages with subcategories in each stage. The first step is self-awareness. The second step is comparison, and the third step is production. Let's get started. First, you have to record your piece, start to finish. Try to not look in your score, even if it is not memorized. I'm looking at myself because I have not memorized my recital program yet. Let's not talk about it. Even if you forget a line or a page or a few pages or a whole section, or you just jumped right to the end of the piece from the beginning, keep going because now's the time to see how much of your piece you have memorized and how much you still have to work on. If you skip this step, the rest of the steps will not matter. And you will not get your recital done on time because you will never be able to gauge how much of your piece you actually have memorized. I have made this mistake before and I have gone on stage thinking that I have everything memorized, totally unwillingly forgetting that I actually did peak in my score and I ended up having a memory slip. So I have learned from my mistakes and I do not do that anymore. Next, listen to your recording, as cringe as it may be, and fix whatever you don't like in it. This is a crucial part of recording yourself. I know a lot of my friends and a lot of me records myself and doesn't listen to the whole tape because it is really, 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 really cringe. Now, I don't blame anyone for not wanting to listen to their own recordings because it does sound really bad, but as bad as it may sound, you need to listen to it. The little mistakes you will fix in this recording include memory slips, phrasing, basically anything that you can put your finger on. Don't be discouraged if you take a long time on this first recording. If you've run out of thing to fix or you've hit a performer's block, you don't know what to do next, it's time to move on to record it again. This recording should be a lot more confident and consciously musical, meaning you're doing more of what you wanted to do initially. And you should have less memory slips because you should have fixed them in the previous take, remember? In the second step, comparison. You're going to be, obviously, comparing yourself to your favorite artists. This is a loaded step. I think you all know what it is, listening to a recording. There's definitely a stigma when it comes to using recordings to help you figure out what you want to say in a piece. My philosophy is, if you don't know how to do it, look to the masters. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with listening to a recording if you're lost or in a slump because somebody did it before you and they probably did it better than you. It's a waste of technology not to use those recordings to help you understand what you want to say as an artist. Now I know that some people might say that I am stifling my own artistic expression and my voice by listening and copying other artists, but I'm not blindly copying what these artists are doing. I am cherry picking the effects that I like and don't like, and I'm being very selective in what I put in my final copy. Isn't that what we do in our lesson anyway? I also like to use this step to answer some unanswered questions in my work. Sometimes there's a line or two lines or maybe even a page that just doesn't make sense. Why is it there? What is its purpose? Listening to another artist give you their take on it might help you make sense of it for yourself. Now this process is gonna take a while, so give yourself time to process all the new information that you're receiving from the recordings of yourself and of other people because you did procrastinate on this. This brings us to, you guessed it, record it again. This third recording will be representative of what you have to say as an artist. You're ready to accept criticism or commentary from outside sources. Feel free to send it to people you trust, AKA your prof, your mom, your friend. The reason I would not recommend sending out premature recordings is it may totally stray you in the wrong direction of how to fix this piece because you haven't totally figured out what your view on the piece is yet. And now you're ready to move on to the production stage. To record, record, record. In this stage, you're gonna be recording your piece every single day and working to fix minor details. At this point, you should have a clear understanding of what your piece is, what you wanna do with it, and what is possible to do with it in the time that you have. I like to plan my preparation of a piece so I have at least one week in this last stage. The reason is something happens to your brain when you have to play your piece through every single day for a whole week straight. Gears will start turning in your brain. Trust me, in this stage, you will find things out about your piece that you have never found out before. Not from recordings, not from your teacher, and not from playing it for so long. You will feel comfortable in front of the camera because you have been doing it for so many days straight and it will not be such a big scary event anymore. Make sure that for every single recording session you are dressed your best and you look your best and you are always ready for that one magical take 
that may or may not happen that you will end up sending off. You don't want to ruin it by not wearing shoes in your recording. Put on your favorite dress, put on your favorite heels, or whatever boys wear for recordings, your favorite bow tie, I don't know. Because you may not be going out a lot during this pandemic, but at least you can look good on your recording. <laughs> I hope this video helped you guys prep for your recording. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and comment down below with what piece you decided to record for your recital this year. See you next time. Bye!